Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. So this is uh, the fourth part of a five part series with the trip going to Peru. So if you watched the last video, we went from Pura to Colon and spent the night in Colon. So we actually spent two nights in Colon. And today we're going to talk about the first day that we were there. So our first day in Colon, we wanted to go visit a beached ship. We also wanted to go to what Susan was telling us. She called it a bird pier. So a little pier out on the ocean that uh, houses a lot of birds. Pretty cool. We're also going to take a walk along the beach, show you what we find along the beach, and take a drive into town to see how beautiful the little town of Colon is. So, I hope you enjoy the video. We're going to start out with some drone footage from Santiago and enjoy that. That gives you a really good overview of the place where we stayed, a beautiful, beautiful little hotel right on the coast, right along the beach. The tide goes in and goes out, I think every six hours, um, pretty, pretty quickly. So uh, you've always got water up close and you've always got water further away where you have a little bit of beach. So enjoy this drone footage and we'll be right back. Okay, so once again, we had incredible plans to go visit some old ships that had washed ashore. And they were a little ways down the beach, but as we started talking to the taxi drivers, those two ships that were beached somehow got unbeached and are no longer there. However, there is a new 
ship that is beached and we went to find that. The taxi drive, of course, was another moto taxi. They have become one of my favorite forms of travel. This time, however, there's three of us, so we squished three of us into the back seat and off we went down the back way. The taxi drivers won't take their taxis on the beach, probably because the tide's flowing in and out or some rule or something, I'm not quite sure. But anyhow, they had to go on the back side, on the other side of the sand dunes. And so we traveled down and not far enough. So we got back in, back down, a little bit further, hiked over the sand dunes, came back, nope, gotta go a little bit further. So we kept doing that until we finally got close enough to the ship that we could um, hike the rest of the way. So you have to go across the sand dunes, which is a pretty good ways. And then once you get to the beach where it's all nice and wet and packed in, then you can hike the rest of the way down the beach and go visit the ship. Ship was really interesting. The sand dunes were really interesting. I'm going to say the sand dunes are a lot like quicksand and you just, if you don't step in just the right spot where it's a little packed in, you just sink. It's just like quicksand. You just, every step you take, you're, you're not moving anywhere. You're just sinking into the sand. And the taxi driver doesn't drive over those sand dunes either. So uh, he was staying on the more packed area, but it was, it was an interesting trek nonetheless. So we got all the way over to the, the ship and it was massive, just really massive. It was a tuna ship. I really wanted some tuna, hmm, no tuna for me, but this was the closest I was gonna get to, to tuna, a tuna ship that washed ashore. It'd be really neat, my son says, it'd be really neat to go inside of it and see what's inside. That would be really neat. Uh, I think it'd been there for a while, so I'm sure um, if people could get in, it would be have been really picked over. But you can't find in, any information on this ship uh, or either the other ones that really washed ashore. Where'd they come from? How'd they get there? Was it a big, you know, huge storm? Were they unprepared? And who knows? I will say that this ship was located in an area that was not in the little cove like where the hotel is. The hotel's kind of a little bit more protected. There's wind, but not like the wind that we were getting over at the ship. Very possibly a huge storm came and just washed it ashore. Had all the lines still connected and so it just drug everything straight ashore. So hopefully everybody was okay and got out okay and everything was good. So we walked around, we investigated it as much as we could. It was well up onto the beach. And with the, with the tide coming in and going out all this, you know, all the time, it just stays right there, hangs out at the beach. But it was neat, it was really neat. We got to walk all around it and uh, check it all out. So you know, I really love birds, so after we left the ship. Then we took a very casual walk down the beach and just checking out the beach and the wildlife and everything. So we were, the hotel that we're at is kind of in the middle of the, the long beach. So we went all the way to the end, like towards the end of the cove area and uh, walk down there because that's where this uh, bird pier was. It was really interesting. Um, I'm not going to say a lot of people are going to use it. It was not in super good shape, though Santiago did climb up there and very meticulously get out towards the end. The birds didn't care for him invading their space along the pier, but uh, he walked out there nonetheless, and as he did, the, the birds would jump off and fly. So it was really amazing watching all the birds. And they'd be sitting up there, sunning themselves and relaxing in the, the breeze. 
and then they'd jump off and go swimming for a while. And it was really interesting at one point when we got there, we could watch them flying by and they would just, they'd be flying along and they'd just drop like a little bomb into the ocean. And I guess they're fishing. So they'd drop down and go get them a fish and come back up and take off again. It was really interesting. I wish I could have gotten that on camera, but it was pretty far out there. But we could see it. It was, it was good anyways. But it was amazing to watch all these birds and see what kind of birds they are. The biggest bird they have out there is a Peruvian pelican. And they were enormous, enormous birds. And they're really pretty. I got some good pictures of them. They're really pretty birds. A lot prettier than I thought they would be. And also they... Um, they had a lot of variation of birds all along the edge. The big Peruvian pelicans would sit out towards the end, and so they had their own little space. Uh, but everybody else was all along the edge, and so you could get really good pictures of them. And then they'd take off and dive into the water, and it was, it was really amazing to watch. And when the birds weren't doing a whole lot, then you'd turn around and... There's a gazillion crabs climbing on the, uh, just running around in the sand. And these crabs are amazing. So whether they were the black crabs, the red crabs, whatever crabs they were, if they were on the beach, the tide would come in and, and then it'd go out and they would be just busy, busy, busy making these little balls. It's like they're picking up sand and making all these little bitty balls and leaving them like big pools of these little balls they make all over the beach. So if you actually know what they're making, leave it in the comments because it would be interesting <laughs> to see because I think everything has a purpose in life and obviously their purpose is to make these little sand balls. And when you watch the, the tide come in and it just like scoops up all these little sand balls and takes them back out into the ocean, it's like, what are they doing? What, what purpose is all of that for? It's amazing to watch. But they, you know, they have their own little character, their own little way of doing things, and they were really fun to watch. And then we turn around and watch the birds some more because the birds were amazing as well. Got some really pretty pictures of the birds. I, I had to go find all the names of the birds, so I had to look them all up because there were just, there's so many different varieties of birds. We just really had a good day. And then walking back, um, Susan had told me that she found a sand dollar on the beach. And so I remember when I was young, we, we would go to the Gulf Coast beach and you could find little sand dollars and stuff like that. But you rarely found one complete it was always broken or something like that. Here, I found one and she found one too on the same, you know, almost at the same time. A whole sand dollar, just a complete whole sand dollar. It um, was still pretty fresh. It hasn't turned white yet. It's sitting on my counter waiting to turn white. So it'd be prettier. But I've never ever found one like that. And this is a big sand dollar. So I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed with my sand dollar. <laughs> and then after we finished with the beach, um, Santiago took us on just kind of a tour through town because it, it, it is really a cute, cute little town. And they've done a lot to color it up and make it more decorative and inviting. So I really enjoyed driving through town um, their square was really cute. Lots of um, little water fountains types of things. Statues in every square. Uh, I'm sure all of them have some kind of story. But uh, today is going to be more about the pictures and the videos. And just having a really peaceful day. So I hope you find as much peace in the video and the uh, pictures 
and enjoy the beauty of Kolan Beach in Peru.